do your constructors still look like this? Well, here's an alternative for you. Not only will it save you some keystrokes, but it also fixes a common design flaw most constructors have. And no, I'm not talking about primary constructors. Stick around until the end to discover whether even records can be improved. The first issue I see with the classic constructor implementation is the amount of typing. We need to specify the constructor parameters and we need to define the fields. Don't forget to mark the fields as read-only where applicable. And of course we have to assign the parameters to the fields. To reduce this tedious manual work, modern c -sharp offers primary constructors. But this isn't the perfect solution in most cases, for several reasons. If we use primary constructors without fields and directly use the constructor parameters in all methods, we end up breaking common naming conventions. Without a common prefix, fields are harder to identify as class members in classes spanning a few screen pages. Sure, we can still assign the constructor parameters to dedicated fields, but then we don't gain much from using primary constructors in the first place. A pragmatic approach might be to name the constructor parameters like members. But this can confuse developers when they see member naming conventions apply to parameters. Finally, in reality, we often end up going back to classic constructor style because our classes need additional initialization logic. And there is one more important aspect that I think is even more critical than convenience or naming conventions. Guards. One of the key responsibilities of a constructor is to ensure that only valid objects can be created. If a dependency is not optional, the constructor must not accept null as an argument. This is why in clean code, constructors typically have guards, like throwing an argument null exception directly or using some design by contract utility. We can implement this with primary constructors as well by assigning constructor parameters to members. But from my perspective, this code is less intuitive and harder to read. Regardless of which approach we choose, we still have to remember to add guards and its extra typing. This is probably why I often see guards either forgotten or skipped. So here's an alternative which aims to address all these issues. It's a library called Autoconstructor. We install the Autoconstructor library like any other regular Nugget package. To use it, we first remove the constructor but keep the read-only fields. We then simply add the Autoconstructor attribute to the class declaration. The Autoconstructor library has a built-in analyzer that reminds us that the class now needs to be partial, so we convert it into a partial class. When we use our class, autocompletion already shows us that it now has a constructor, which requires parameters for every read-only field we have defined. But what if our class needs additional initialization logic? We simply add a private method that returns void and apply the autoconstructor initializer attribute. This method will then be called at the end of the constructor. Would you agree that this approach even leads to cleaner code, because member initialization is now clearly separated from additional initialization logic? And what about guards? By default, Autoconstructor doesn't add guards to the constructors. However, we can configure it to automatically add guards to all Autoconstructors, which in my opinion should actually be the default. If the basic features of the Autoconstructor library don't cover all your use cases, check out the GitHub page. It supports quite a bit of customization. Before we explore if Autoconstructor can improve data structures as well, let me quickly explain how it actually works. The library provides a so-called source generator, a feature of the Roslyn compiler platform. Source generators inspect our code as it is being compiled and produce additional source files on the fly, which are then compiled together with the rest of our code. Since the code is generated at compile time, source generators do not add any runtime overhead. This makes Autoconstructor a great utility to boost productivity and even improve code quality. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's talk about data structures. A convenient and quite popular way to define a simple data structure in modern c -sharp is this. If a property is mandatory, we could simply use the required keyword. Since data structures typically don't require additional initialization logic, we are basically fine with this, right? Let's take a closer look at the C-Sharp documentation to see how the required keyword actually works. Required members must be initialized, but they may be initialized to null. If the type is a not nullable reference type, the compiler issues a warning if you initialize the member to null. The compiler issues an error if the member isn't initialized at all. This means properties of such classes can still be null. 
unless we enable nullable reference types and also enable treat warnings as errors in our projects. If your project setup supports this configuration, then this might be a good approach for you. Alternatively, we can use Autoconstructor for such data structures as well. We simply change the properties to read-only properties by removing the setter and then apply the Autoconstructor attribute. Of course, we have to mark this class as partial. And with the next compilation, we get a constructor for initialization along with guards for free. But what about records? Since records are just classes with value object semantics, init-only properties and the required keyword behave exactly the same. If we are defining a record using positional syntax, we are essentially defining a primary constructor and we get properties and their initialization for free. But as we discussed earlier, primary constructors don't include guards, so we could again end up with invalid instances being created. Unfortunately, we cannot use autoconstructor to automatically generate these guards as records are not supported yet. And there's one more limitation of the autoconstructor library specifically related to data structures. The generated guards only perform null checks. If a data structure requires more advanced validation to prevent invalid instances from being created, we would have to introduce an initializer again. But there's another trick that also works with records and even primary constructors, which I explain in this video.